despite everybody correcting him, he still says that, well, you believe, you know, evolutionists believe we came from a rock. Except that no evolutionist ever believed that. Nobody, yeah. not one, not ever. Well, hello there, people says, and welcome to day two of Movember. Today, we're dissecting the dishonesty of Matt Powell. Yeah, you know, that piece of human garbage who can't stop claiming scientists think life evolved from rocks. He knows it's a lie. He's been corrected hundreds of times, but he just keeps repeating the same tired old nonsense. It's almost as if he learned from Kent Oven. <laughs> Let's find out exactly why this rock to life theory is just another pathetic young earth creationist lie, shall we? Shut up and sit down, you big Ball f subscribe. This scientific paper says uh, here that you can see it says life and rocks may have co-evolved on Earth, and it goes on to say that rocks beget life. Right there. Well, you're off to a great start, young Matthew. That's two huge errors in one sentence. First of all, scientists call this abiogenesis, not evolution. And second, begot implies spontaneous generation from an inert object. What they actually say is that granite facilitated chemical reactions lead into self-replicating molecules. It's a process, not a parent. Here's from a scientific paper that was published recently. It says rocks and minerals must have played key roles in virtually every phase of life's emergence. And they may have even acted as life's first genetic system. How can somebody who is so wrong be that smug? He keeps framing a mineral's catalytic function as parentage. A rock surface acting as a template for chemical reactions that lead to self-assembly is the difference between a kiln baking clay pots and the kiln actually being the potter. The rock provided the right conditions, the specific alignment of iron, sulfur or silicates for non-living chemistry to move forward towards complexity. It's an environmental facilitator, not a direct ancestor, you clown. If a rock begot life, every rock would be a biological hotspot. It's the chemistry on the surface, not the rock itself, that matters, you absolute walnut. There's Grandma and Grandpa, folks. Rocks. Oh, Matt, and any other young Earth creationist for that matter, when people say things to you like, how stupid can you be? It's rhetorical. It isn't a challenge. The Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Yeah. And again, they'll say, nobody thinks we came from a rock. This is a straw man. No, you can type in on Google. Just do it right now if you want to. I won't judge you. You owe your life to a rock. Type it in. I have, Matt. Many, many times. And every time I do, it shows us all how wrong you are. Matt's challenge to Google you owe your life to a rock is, like everything else Matt Powell says, really stupid. That search result points directly to a scientific paper discussing mineral catalysts, not literal ancestry. What you're saying is like searching for my car runs on petrol and then claiming that the search results prove the car was born from a petrol pump. And it brings up this paper, and the first few words of the paper are, thank goodness for granite. No, don't thank granite. Don't thank a rock for your life. Thank God above. You know what I said a couple of seconds ago that I have Googled it many, many times? Well, just like every other time, context matters, Matt, doesn't it? Which is probably why you always leave huge chunks of this paper out. The paper is literally thanking granite for providing the necessary erosion and metal-rich composition that set the stage for complex chemistry. It's an acknowledgement of a physical requirement, not a spiritual devotion. So if I thank my coffee maker for the caffeine that got me through listening to a video of you a shite, am I worshipping the heating element? No, I'm acknowledging a useful chemical process, which is exactly what the scientists who wrote this paper are doing. Get a grip, you poob. In the beginning, God, not in the beginning, a rock. Yeah. A lot of atheists will say that it's absurd that Mary could have conceived by the Holy Spirit. How could a virgin conceive? Look, they think a rock conceived. Atheists 
do not think a rock conceived. We think a rock provided a stable, chemically useful surface. The difference is, Matt, that one is a testable hypothesis about geology and organic chemistry, and the other is just a Sunday school story. The minute you have to invent an impossible scenario, like a rock spontaneously conceiving to make your own belief system sound rational, you've completely lost the plot. Abiogenesis is a complex, time-consuming transition from non-living chemicals to self-replicating polymers governed by physics and chemistry. The Immaculate Conception is, by definition, outside of physics and chemistry. They're not even in the same conversation. You're comparing a multi-stage chemical hypothesis to a magical space baby. I can't imagine anything worse than having to lie my way through life just to defend a religious position. What exactly a young earth creationist like Matt getting out of it? Apart from a feature in one of my videos. <laughs> I was in a debate with this guy, the raging atheist, and he said, I don't understand how a Jewish man could die and resurrect from the dead. How could you believe that? Isn't that crazy? Matt. Skepticism of the resurrection is based on the lack of testable, repeatable evidence. Skepticism of your claim is based on the overwhelming evidence that you have completely misrepresented the field of abiogenesis. A resurrection is the dead coming back to life. Abiogenesis is the transition from a non-living chemical, an abiotic, to the first self-replicating molecules, biotics. It's not a resurrection, it's a chemical ground graduation. Try using the correct scientific term for once, you dick. Look, atheism teaches that every living organism came alive by itself, resurrected itself from the dead. Atheism teaches a bigger resurrection than Christianity. So, according to little Matty Boyer, we're supposed to believe that the self-assembly of organic polymers on a mineral surface is crazier than a god magically bringing a corpse back to life or a man walking on water, or a man turning water into wine, or a talking burning bush. Yeah, having confidence in science is crazy, Matt, isn't it? <laughs> I believe Jesus had the power to lay down his life, take it back, uh -huh. but atheists believe that every living organism, catch this, every living organism came from non-existence. Ooh it is. The magical word. Belief. That's the difference between young earth creationists and, well, everyone who isn't religious, realistically speaking. Belief doesn't come into it. We don't need to believe in science. We just need to follow the evidence. And the evidence says that you're an idiot. Let me tell you, it takes more faith yeah. to be an atheist than it does to be a Christian. Faith is belief without evidence. Science is driven by evidence. Atheism isn't a belief system like young earth creationism. It's just the lack of belief in a god. The end, that's it. It doesn't teach abiogenesis any more than it teaches fluid dynamics. The scientific hypothesis for the origin of life and the evolution of species are accepted because they are the most robust, evidence-supported models we have, not because we have faith in a lack of God. The only person relying on blind faith here is the one dismissing chemical reality in favour of a 6,000-year-old magic trick. And just in case you're confused, Matt, that's you. It takes irrational faith, blind faith in that which you cannot see to be an atheist. Yeah, cool. So it takes more faith to understand that water, heat, and basic elements can form complex molecules over vast timescales than it takes to believe in a talking snake and a magic baby. Now, if that's the hill Matt's chosen to die on, then he's just proven why he's earned the title of liar. And not just a liar, but a liar who spreads demonstrable nonsense. So it says here that erosion of metal-rich granite long ago set the stage for multicellular organisms. How interesting. I love the way that this one starts out. It starts out by saying, thank goodness for granite. These scientists... Hang on a second, twatty. 
Sorry, did I say twatty? I meant to say matty, obviously. Well, ha, ha, ha. Why are you just skipping over the rest of that paper and pulling it off screen? Is it because the next line perfectly illustrates that you're lying about what this paper actually says to try and convince people that reality is what you say it is and not what science demonstrates it is? Because it goes on to say, if not for the formation and subsequent erosion of large quantities of metal-rich granite, on a supercontinent that formed billions of years ago, the evolution of multicellular life, including us, could have been stifled or delayed according to this new study. I know, imagine that. A young Earth creation is being deliberately dishonest. They're saying, don't thank God for life. Thank your granite grandfather, Rock. Because if it wasn't for him, this unconscious Rock that was rained on and had minerals come out of it, then we wouldn't have even come into existence. He knows nobody believes in a literal granite grandfather. He's intentionally simplifying and sensationalizing the crucial role of geochemistry in early life research because it doesn't fit this biblical timeline. <laughs> The true scientific point is that life emerged via a series of natural chemical steps, not via a magical sky daddy. Matt's entire video is built on lies, so we can avoid debating the actual evidence supported science. It's a fundamental tactic of this pathetic little turd. He believes we came from a rock, yet the materials that eventually formed into life came from the rock being hit by water on the surface of the earth. Okay, let's try this then. What does young earth creationism teach about the oranges, the oranges of life? <laughs> okay, let's try this then. What does young earth creationism teach about the origins of life? Well, I'll tell you because I have read the Bible, Matt, many times. You believe that God created Adam from the dust on the ground and the dust on the ground is formed primarily through the natural processes of weathering and erosion, which breaks down larger rocks into smaller fragments and fine particles. So uh, tell me again, who is it believes that we came from rocks? The fact that they're embarrassed that they believe that life descended from rocks should tell us that we should boldly defend our faith and stand up for Jesus and what we believe in. You know what, Matt? You're right. I am embarrassed for you because whenever I respond to one of your videos or any other young earth creationist, it feels like I'm booing at the Special Olympics. I find it intriguing how some of these guys that have a very big following, they will just make these blanket statements. Nobody believes we came from a rock. Nobody believes that, Matt, when you can just easily look it up. Do you know what I find really interesting about Matt Powell? Nothing. He's just a boring, dweeby little turd who parrots the things that Uncle Kent told him to say. They want to make believe this yeah. alternative reality. It's like with Matt Powell, I, I am convinced that he knows that he's speaking nonsense. You I, mentioned I, he's been corre uh, corrected by so many different yeah, people. Put, when put, has he ever said, okay, well, I was wrong about that. No, he doesn't do that. Change his position. Right, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll same be corrected sense. about the same thing yeah. over and over and over again and keep repeating yeah. what he knows to be wrong. Oh, I think I can help on that one, lads. It's because he's a lying scumbag who's desperate for attention. Thank you all so much for watching, and uh, I guess I'll see you again tomorrow. Out of everything that's on the internet, this is the best thing. Just quickly before you go, did you know that Bruce Lee had a daughter named Simone? I didn't, but apparently she's really well known in the world of mobile phone contracts. <laughs> Love you, bye. I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 ever gone.